don't know, I'm Karen Dion, and I'm the USA Today number one internationally best-selling author of two novels of psychological suspense that are set in Michigan's Upper Peninsula Wilderness, The Marsh King's Daughter and The Wicked Sister. Both books were selected by the Library of Michigan as Michigan Notable Books, and The Marsh King's Daughter has won numerous awards, um, most notably the Barry Award for Best Novel. That was absolutely a high point for me. The Marsh King's Daughter is also currently in pre-production as a major motion picture starring Ben Mendelsohn and Daisy Ridley with filming set to begin this summer in Canada. So yay, <laughs> that's super exciting. Thank you all. <laughs> now I wanna move on and introduce our wonderful authors. I'm gonna start with Taylor Adams. He graduated, wave Taylor, <laughs> he graduated from Eastern Washington University with the Edmund J. Yarwood Award and is the author of No Exit. His newest thriller, Hairpin Bridge, releases June 15. And I have to smile when I share this bio with you because I asked the authors for a brief two sentence bio and I think, I think Taylor, you took me a little too literally at my word. <laughs> so the Edmund J. Yarwood Award is for screenwriting, you know, and Taylor works as a director and he's worked in the film industry for a number of years. And um, yeah, he also has won numerous awards and accolades for his work. So congrats on that. Tracy Clark is a native Chicagoan and the author of the award-winning Cass Rain's Chicago Mystery Series featuring ex-cop turned PI, Cassandra Rains. And Anthony, lefty and Seamus Award finalist, she is also the 2020 winner of the GP Putnam Sons Sue Grafton Memorial Award. Tracy serves on the boards of the Mystery Writers of America Midwest, Sisters in Crime Chicagoland and BoucherCon National. Her fourth book, Runner, releases in June, 2021. So there's two books coming out just around the corner, Taylor's and, and uh, Tracy's. Now we move on to Andrew Grant or Andrew Child as it says on his screen. Andrew is a former theater producer and telecommunications executive and he's been writing thrillers since 2006. He published nine books under his own name and recently writing as Andrew Child joined his brother Lee to help continue the Jack Reacher series. And get this, their first collaboration, The Sentinel, was an international number one bestseller and a finalist for the British Book of the Year Award. So congrats on that, Andrew, great start. And Megan Miranda is the New York Times bestselling author of All the Missing Girls, The Perfect Stranger, the, and The Last House Guest, which was a Reese Witherspoon book club pick, and more, The Girl from Widow Hills. Her newest book, Such a Quiet Place, will be published on July 14th, 13th, close enough. <laughs> and I have a feeling that the, there's more to that name than it sounds, and it's probably anything but a quiet place in your story. <laughs> so thank you all for coming here. So, okay, let's, let's do this 20 questions game because it's a lot of fun. I know the authors are always nervous because they don't know what the questions are going to be. <laughs> and uh, we have these official backroom cards. Can, I don't know, how, how do we do this? There you go, can you see that? Isn't that neat? With a question on the other side. So I'm going to ask the questions in the order I see people on the screen, which means Andrew, we start with you. <laughs> so first question, how long have you been writing? Well, I've been writing since, um, well, I've been telling stories all my life, but I've been writing books since 2006. Yeah. So when I, when I cease to be gainfully employed anywhere else. <laughs> there says that seems to be something that in common with your family. I've noticed that. <laughs> okay, um, Tracy, what's the first thing you do when you get an idea for a book? Um, I write it down. Uh, I have a notebook by my bed. And if I get a spark of an idea anytime uh, between uh, sunset and sunrise, uh, it goes on the notebook. So how thick is this book? Um, well, when, it, when I fill one up, I just start another one. Wow, wow. And so you then wanna, I- you don't, you don't wanna lose an idea. Yeah. So that's, I think that's the point. That's very cool, yeah. Um, Megan, what was your favorite book as a child? Oh, I feel like this answer always changes for me. Um, 
When I was a child, I loved Nancy Drew, I'm a huge mystery reader. Um, but the book I think that stuck with me the most is probably Number of the Stars by Lois Lowry. That was that was one I thought about for years and years after. Nice. Taylor, what's one thing about writing and publishing that you had to learn the hard way? Ooh, um, I would say to be more confident as a storyteller, because I mean, there's a lot of there's a lot of thinking that goes into it. But at the end of the day, it's also you kind of have to write with your gut. And I have a tendency to overthink. So working through that has been a probably a big. Um, Tracy, what's your guilty pleasure? Mm. At the end of the day, after I've written everything that I, my brain can come up with, a nice bath, a nice bath, a good book that's not mine, and just sort of luxuriate for maybe 45 minutes or so. That's awesome. Megan, what's your current obsession? Oh, my current obsession. Wow. Oh, these are hard questions. Um, I... <laughs> I so I have this stack of books that I like save myself for when I'm drafting and so I'm staring at that stack right now because I'm not done with my book and it's like the books I've been saving myself and I feel like that's my obsession right now because it keeps growing and it's sort of the the like the reward I save myself um, and so this summer you're going to find me deep in that stack of books I've been saving for most of the year. Sounds great. I wouldn't call that a guilty pleasure, though, because we, we all have those stacks of books, right? <laughs> Taylor, when do you feel the most creative? Ooh, uh, definitely first thing in the morning with like a gallon of coffee in my system. But like the earlier I can start in the day, I think the better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that works. And where do you live, if I might ask? Like uh, we're seeing wow. trees behind you there. We are in beautiful, not quite sunny, not quite rainy, drizzly Washington. Yeah, yeah. So nice place to uh, enjoy your morning coffee, I'm sure. Yes. Andrew, this might be a hard one for you now. What's the most difficult thing about writing a book? <laughs> um, and don't say everything. I think, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think really starting it is the most difficult thing. Um, a good friend of mine once described it as being a little bit like, you know, when you're trying to um, you're trying to um, stick something together with sellotape, right? So you pull out the roll of sellotape and you, you go round and you go round and you go round and you can't find the end of it because it's stuck down and you just keep going round and round looking for it. It's kind of like that for me because I know there's an idea there somewhere. Um, I'm not as organized as Tracy, so I haven't written it in a, in a nice notebook, but I know it's there somewhere. And I just try to get to that, you know, the, the start where you can peel back the tape, where you can start the process. And um, it always seems to take me longer to, uh, to manage to do that than it really should. So I think that's probably the hardest part for me. Okay, yeah. Thank you. Tracy, what's one thing you've always wanted to do, but you've been too afraid to try it? Go to the moon. Um, I've always wanted to sort of see the earth from up there, but I don't trust NASA. And so I'm not gonna go, <laughs> you know, but I would kind of like to go to space in theory. <clears throat> Very nice. Well, maybe you'll get the chance one day. Who knows? Okay, Megan, you said I've given you hard questions. This one's easy. Is your desk messy or tidy? Oh my gosh, it's so messy. I have strategically placed my computer so you cannot see the piles. <laughs> like, I'm crazy when you said you have notebooks, like that's what I have stacked on the side yep. here. And in my mind, I'm like, oh, I wrote that down in this specific notebook, but I don't know which one and I'm constantly kind of going through. I know I made a note about that somewhere. So messy. You have to number them. You number them. <laughs> That's smart. <laughs> wow. We can help each other, right? <laughs> okay. And this last question is for Taylor. Who would you most love to have a cocktail with? Ooh. Um, fictional living, living, dead, fictional. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, I would say the protagonist of, I can't remember uh, his name, but the protagonist of The Martian, um, Andy Wears the Martian, I think I, something just about the, you know, the, the situation and then just the, the tenacity of not giving up and just kind of engineering a problem when faced with just nonstop, or engineering a solution when faced with nonstop problems is just really inspiring and then sticking with it. So 
yeah that that would be fascinating for sure i love that book as like we probably all did <laughs> so so now we're going to ask the authors just uh briefly tell us about a book that you think everyone should read you know it blew you away and and you want to share it with others so andrew again we'll start with you what what book are you recommending everybody read okay well the one i would recommend um is called the munich dossier by charles mccary and uh the reason I don't have a copy of it with me to hold up, unfortunately, but the reason I'm recommending it is I've always been fascinated with different ways of telling stories. You know, you, most stories involve some kind of narrative, be it linear, be it whether it has a flashback in it, whether it has different points of view. You know, there are lots of different ways to tell stories, but this book I think is just the most audacious and the most um, outrageous really, because there is no traditional narrative in it. What it is, it's as if you are it's as if you walk into your boss's office and he or she gives you a, a folder full of pieces of paper and you have to read it and you have to make sense of it and it's a series of accounts and letters and reports and file notes by a bunch of different characters wow that sounds fascinating i'm sure we're all going to check that out how about you tracy which book are you recommending we read i've recommended a debut novel uh, it's uh, all her little secrets by wanda morris um what i like about this is that she sort of sets the vice in this one early and it slowly turns as the pages go on uh, at least little john has a sort of shady uh past um she is now a lawyer uh very successful but she's not very far from her past and the things that happened uh, in her childhood. Thank you. And thank you for recommending a debut author too, because, you know, everybody has to start somewhere and right. debuts is such a big, exciting time for them. So yeah, that that's all sounds great. How about you, Megan? What are you recommending? So I'm going to recommend Family Donovan is Killing It by El Casamano. And I had a copy of the book and then my mom came over and she took it. So <laughs> I have a picture on my phone right now. And it was just such an enjoyable read. I love reading mysteries and thrillers. And I think it's so hard to also walk that line between tension and mystery and humor. And this book does both things so well. Um, the premise I feel like is something a lot of mystery and thriller writers can maybe relate to. Um, it's a writer and she's a single mom and she's meeting her agent out of Panera. And as she's talking about the plot of her new book, her somebody overhears her and thinks she is a contract killer. She mistakes her for a contract killer. And so that is what kicks off this story of somebody's like, well, do I have the job for you? And it's funny, <laughs> but it's also this mystery. And I just, I loved it. It's the start of a series. Um, so I can't read to read, wait to read the next ones. Definitely recommend it. Thank you. Sounds great. How about you, Taylor? Yeah, mine is called Survivor Song by Paul Tremblay. And uh, it's kind of a zombie story, but it's a really interesting twist on the whole zombie genre, which obviously, you know, that's been done a lot. And this is a really, really fascinating new way into it. And uh, it's heartbreaking. It's eerie. It's subtle. It's, uh, it's also really rapidly paced. The entire story takes place over a few hours. And uh, it's basically just about two friends, two female friends, one is pregnant and one also and also might be infected. So it's kind of a race against time. And uh, in addition to just being probably my favorite book that I've read recently, it's also hilariously um, prescient because it was written in 2019. And uh, there are a lot of things about 2020 that are, it's kind of ahead of its time. It's really interesting, like vaccines and masks and things that, you know, we're all very well aware of now or we're, we're they're interesting parts of this book. So this book had some really interesting things to say before 2020, which also is amusing, but it is just a fabulous book. Wow, they all sound wonderful. Thank you so much. Wasn't that fun? We hope you enjoyed this taste of what a backroom event is like. The best part comes immediately after when the audience is divided into four breakout rooms and the authors visit each room in turn. We'd love to show you what a breakout session is like because these relaxed face-to-face -face conversations between authors and readers are the hallmark of our backroom events. But breakout sessions are never recorded. What's said in the backroom stays in the backroom. Mm -hmm.